Hi, this is Spencer, and in this video we're going to talk about lung anatomy. Understanding the anatomy of the lung, particularly the relationships between different lobes of the lung, will help you interpret radiographs and clinical vignettes on both the wards and on your boards. Lungs themselves are made up of smaller units called bronchopulmonary segments. You probably know that deoxygenated blood is delivered to the lungs to be reoxygenated, but the pulmonary tissue itself needs to be oxygenated as well, which is why the lung has a dual blood supply. Deoxygenated blood from the pulmonary arteries and oxygenated blood from the bronchial arteries. Another example of an organ with a dual blood supply is the liver, via the portal vein and hepatic artery. Blood is delivered to each bronchopulmonary segment via a bronchial and pulmonary artery, which run in the center of the segment. Venous blood and lymphatics drain along the edges of each segment. This is how the lung receives the oxygen necessary to perform properly. Board exams commonly test you on the relationship of the vessels to the airway in a bronchopulmonary segment. So be sure to remember that arteries run in the center and veins and lymphatics run along the edges of each segment. This is a very high yield concept. Now, what did the lungs look like grossly? The trachea divides into the left and right main stem bronchi. The board's like testing your knowledge that the right main stem bronchus takes off from the trachea at a more vertical angle compared to the left. How do you think this anatomy affects intubations and aspirations? If you place an endotracheal tube and it advances too deeply, it is more likely to go into the right main stem bronchus. In the same way, foreign body aspirations are much more likely to be found in the right lung specifically the lower lobe if the patient is upright at the time of the event. When a patient is lying supine or on their back as in a hospital bed, aspirations tend to go to the posterior segment of the right upper lobe, once again because of gravity. The right lung consists of three lobes, while the left lung only has two lobes and a lingula. I like to remember left lingula because of the L's, which then reminds me it's the left lung that only has two lobes. Another trick is that the word lingula means small tongue in Latin, and the lingula anatomically resembles a tongue. In the left lung, the lingula is the homologue of the right middle lobe, but this space in the left lung is occupied by the heart. The right lung is also unique because it has a horizontal fissure, also known as the minor fissure, which can be seen on chest radiograph. This fissure, which separates the superior and middle lobes of the right lung, lies at the level of the fourth rib. On a board exam, the question stem might describe a knife wound to the anterior chest. Then they might ask you what lung lobes could have been involved based on what rib level the knife wound is. Knowing that the horizontal fissure is at the level of rib 4 and knowing what lobes it separates will help you rule out some of the answer choices. As you see, looking anterior to posterior, the lower lobe of the right lung is mostly obscured by the superior and middle lobes, or the upper and middle lobes, showing us the more posterior position of the lower lobe. The left lung demonstrates the same relationship, with the upper lobe being slightly more anterior than the lower lobe. In terms of lung borders, on the front of the chest, the apices of the lungs extend 2-4 to four centimeters above the clavicles, right here. On an exam, the question stem could describe a penetrating lung injury to the region just superior to the clavicle. The patient could be experiencing tachypnea, tachycardia, and diaphoresis. With these symptoms, you must consider damage to the lung apex causing a pneumothorax. Clinically, this region must be carefully approached when inserting a chest port or central line, as the operation is done just along the clavicle, within close proximity to the lung apex itself. On the back, apices only extend to T1, and the base of the lungs extend to T10 on exhalation and T12 on deep inspiration. So if you want to drain a pleural effusion via needle thoracentesis, where should you place your needle? So the location may vary a bit, but generally you'd insert the needle in between the 5th to 7th intercostal space if you're going anteriorly, the 7th to 9th in the mid-axillary line, and the 9th to 11th posteriorly. Okay, so let's put this knowledge to use. What lobe is the pneumonia in? Well, we know it's on the right side, so how many lobes do you have to choose from? That's right, just three. You can also tell it's not in the right upper lobe because that area is completely clear. You can also clearly see the right hemidiaphragm, or the line between where the, the lung and the diaphragm meets, meaning it likely spares the right lower lobe. Therefore, it's likely in the right middle lobe. 
You can tell it's in the right middle lobe because of how well it follows the horizontal fissure and how it fades inferiorly. In contrast, this is a right lower lobe pneumonia. Here you cannot see the diaphragm at all. On the left side you see this clear difference here and nothing over here. Here you cannot see the diaphragm at all and the superior lung space looks clear. Okay, so let's test ourselves. A three-year-old boy is brought to the hospital with acute shortness of breath. He was playing with marbles in the playground when his mother noticed him cough and become acutely short of breath. As the boy was continuing to struggle to breathe, he was brought to the hospital. Prior to this incident, he was healthy. His vaccinations are up to date and he takes no medications. On x-ray of the chest, which portion of the lung is most likely to appear abnormal? Right, so the right lower lobe. Acute shortness of breath in a young, healthy child is most often due to aspiration of small objects. The right main bronchus is more vertical, as you'll remember, and it's wider than the left. The aspirated particles are more likely to lodge at the junction of the right inferior and right middle bronchi. If the object aspirated is radiopaque, like a quarter, which is commonly aspirated, then you would be able to see it on chest x-ray. The right lower lobe may appear more opaque on radiograph as well, given there will be volume loss due to the lack of airflow.